Hello everyone. I wanted to talk about the dangers of some orchid pots while I was repotting my Miltoniopsis earlier. Um, there's three things in general that you need to, well four things that you need to think about when you're repotting your orchid. That's the size of the plant, temperature, air exchange, and watering. Now the first thing I want to talk about is temperature. Orchids, depending on what kind they are, what genus or species dictates what temperatures they want to grow in. So for example, this is a Miltoniopsis. These like lower temperatures than what I have in my house. So this clay orchid pot will, uh, the water will evaporate from this and it sort of works like an evaporative cooler. So that will drop the root ball temperature a little bit and this plant will be happier in my grow space. So I get about 65 nights and 80, 80 degree days in my grow space. So clay is uh, really good for cooling the root system. <clears throat> Vice versa, you wouldn't want to put a warm growing orchid like the Cattleya violacea or Cattleya eldorado, for example, in clay unless your nights are really, really warm because that will drop the temperature of the root zone. You can get root rotting if your roots are too cold. Uh, clay pots provide more insulation as well, so if you have big temperature changes, the temperature will change uh, less quickly, and plants, I don't know, there was some study that uh, was done by, the, I think, the University of Utah, and they said that plants whose roots are not subject to rapid cooling and heating grow better overall, but that's a, uh, you know, it's good to know, but that little factor should not dictate what you, what pot you choose for your orchid. You need to think about temperature, air exchange, and water. So in general, you're not going to have rapid fluctuations, whatever, whatever. So next thing, air exchange. Okay, like I said, terracotta provides great air exchange. Plastic does not so much. Um, you okay? That moves me on to the specialty orchid pots. You'll see these lots of times um, for sale in like hardware stores. I think I got these at a home improvement place. This pot in particular will hold water up to this first hole. That's about two inches of space right there. It'd be good for semi-hydro, but if I want to grow a Cattleya in here, which I did, I would have to tip this for a long time and let the water drain out. And I'm glad that I discovered that I actually it was accidental actually I watered my plant the first time it was potted in here I used to have to carry my pots from the sink back to my plant rack and when I picked it up it dumped water all over so the ones with the built-in saucers you've got to really watch out for that you um, same with this one this one I've got to drain it let it sit drain it let it sit and drain it again because it will hold a lot of water for a long time Okay, so they do have, you know, the good air exchange because of the holes in the sides, but they, they also hold water, so you got to be careful of those. Let's see, I wrote some things down so I wouldn't forget anything. Um, plastic, okay, so plastic provides, you know, not as not any air exchange, really. So you need to, it's really good to add extra slits or holes along the sides so that they can get that. Once you get into seven or eight inch pots, you want to move over to clay probably or do the special uh, special potting method. I'll, um, I'll talk about that in a different video. Once you get to the seven eight range, you want to do clay because you'll get much better air exchange. Your mix will dry faster and you'll have less root rot. So let's see, there it is. Drain holes are the biggest, most obvious thing that you need to look for. This, uh, this is one of those decorative pots that the Phalaenopsis come in in the, in the grocery stores and whatever. This has zero drain holes. These are a death trap for orchids. Um, you can put your orchid back in here once you've, once you've watered it, but you've got to make sure that it drains completely. Also, if you add a couple of like pebbles or glass beads or something to the bottom, not paper towels though, 
that will help also get some air exchange in around the roots between the holes and the bottom of that pot. So, and also I wouldn't do this unless you've got fans going because you, you're just really likely to rot your roots. It's not good unless, unless you've got some practice and, and you know what you're doing. So in general, stay away from the, uh, <clears throat> save these for orchid shows or just when your plant's on display in your windowsill or whatever, when it blooms. Last thing, watering. You got to think about what kind of plant, what kind of plant is it? If it's one like, like this Miltoniopsis, it likes a lot of water. It doesn't like to dry out completely between waterings as, you know, as much so if you've got a clay pot and you don't water enough, it will it will dry out fast and it can suck the water out. So if you're a lazy waterer, that's another factor to consider. Um, just don't be a lazy waterer. Take care of your plants because, you know, if there's multiple factors in orchid growing that you need to pay attention to. If I went, put this pot, sorry, <clears throat> if I put this plant in this pot, for the temperature factor, but I didn't water it, it defeats the whole purpose of having it at a cooler temperature because it's going to dry out and be unhealthy anyway. So, <clears throat> um, right, clay. Some of these orchid pots have unglazed clay in the bottom. That can, that's a rough surface and orchid roots like to attach to surfaces. So if you're gonna grow in one of these, this is great because it's got no saucer, it's got drainage holes, and it's got the side holes, but it's got this rough bottom also. So the best kind of plant to put in here would be like a Phalaenopsis or something that's monopodial that's not gonna grow a huge root system like a Vanda, so that when you repot, if you, you don't have to do it that often and you can just tip it upside down and shake the mix out and kind of pick it out and then put new mix in. So this is the kind of pot that I'd use. If I was going to use this, I'd put a Phalaenopsis in here. Not something that's got to be repotted often. You know, cattleyas are going to outgrow it and their little roots are going to get all in here and then you've got to take it out and put it into a bigger pot and that's just not, not a, the greatest pot <clears throat> for that kind of orchid. Um, okay. Also, well... If you have a big, big plant, I already talked a big, about the big pot size. Okay, I guess if your plant is big or if it's got long internodal spaces, spaces, is, <laughs> if it's a big plant, it has big spaces between the growths, you don't want to use plastic once you get to like seven or eight inch size <clears throat> because the air cannot get very far. This is already not giving it that much air exchange and the air's gotta go all this way into the middle of the pot. It's gotta go a long way. So plastic, if it's a big plant, specimen plant, not the best, not the best. Um, oh, I didn't talk about on temperature. I'm sorry, I've done this video like five times. I can't edit, so. The clear plastic pots, very important. If they get direct sunlight, now I read this on on the AOS on the AOS website or in one of the articles, it was a reputable article. They said that the clear plastic pots can overheat in the sunshine even more than plastic one, black plastic. So if you've got a high light plant and you're trying to grow it in in sunlight you've got to be careful that your root zone does not overheat because this will heat up like a greenhouse and cook the roots. Um, and um, so I haven't done it myself. I haven't actually taken three pots of equal size in green, black, and green, black, and clear to, and put thermometers in them to check it out, but I believe stuff that comes from reputable reputable sources. So morning sun might not be bad, but some can take, depending on where you live, like full sun lots of the day. So the clear pots could be a death trap for the roots of your orchid. Okay, I think that is everything. Make sure, you know, have your drain holes. That's important. Extra slits. Uh, net pots are good for Net pots are good for all kinds of things. Um, I don't have any of those, but I don't see really any dangers of those except the drying factor. 
Um, the get plant drying out too fast if it's a moisture loving orchid. So, <clears throat> I hope that helps with every. Jeez, I cannot talk today. I'm sorry. I hope that helps you guys. If you like the video, subscribe. I'll try to do a better version of it in the future, but I wanted to get this up real quick while I had everything out here. Thanks, everyone.